Hey folks, John here. I'm a former rideshare driver and current truck driver. If you missed my previous content about truck driving, check out the links below in the description. Today I'm reviewing a book called The Long Blink. This is pretty serious stuff, so buckle up. The Long Blink tells the true story of Ed Slattery following a fatal truck crash. Ed was at work while his wife Susan and their two sons, Peter and Matthew, traveled home from a family reunion. After a series of phone calls, Ed learns that his family was in a serious truck accident. Susan was killed and his sons critically injured. Peter eventually recovered, but Matthew was left with permanent disabilities. The truck driver who hit their car admitted that he only got three hours of sleep the night before. He crashed into them after falling asleep at the wheel. It's a truly harrowing story, and it's even scarier to imagine how any one of us could find ourselves in a similar crisis. The author, Brian Kubler, gives a gripping account of Ed's struggle to regain his footing after this overwhelming tragedy, and once you start reading, it's hard to look away. The book also details Ed's fight to make our roads safer and to give his disabled son a better life. Whether you're driving a tractor trailer or a car full of Uber passengers, the long blink is a sobering reminder of what's at stake every time you get behind the wheel. In 2011, Ed and Matthew attended congressional hearings to lobby for safer HOS laws. HOS stands for hours of service. The law limits how long and how often truck drivers are able to work between rest breaks. Since the hearing, the maximum hours per week was reduced from 82 to 70, although the per day limit of 11 hours remained unchanged. As of December 2019, all trucks are also required to have electronic logging devices, or ELDs, to enforce the regulations. One of the most frustrating parts of this story is that no matter how many laws and regulations are passed, it's still very difficult to legislate the human body. The truck driver who crashed into Ed's family was in full compliance with the HOS law. He had taken the required rest time to reset his drive clock, but he stayed up late and got up early without any, getting hardly any quality sleep. Trucking is a 24-7 industry, and there's no law that protects the body's circadian rhythm. Due to unpredictable loading and unloading times and a severe shortage of overnight truck parking, many truckers are forced to vary their sleep-wake cycles by several hours as the work week progresses, getting up at 8 a.m. one day and 4 a.m. the next day, for example. Even if you're working a set schedule, there's no way for the authorities to tell whether you're getting quality rest during your 10-hour break or whether you stayed up all night watching TV. Another factor is age. The Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates that the average truck driver is 55 years old. And although the truck driver in this case was only 51 at the time of the crash, he was still on medication that may have been a contributing factor. Commercial drivers are required to undergo regular medical exams, but these can vary in thoroughness and unfit drivers can still slip through the cracks. As a healthy young man myself, I'm all for the introduction of cutoff ages for truck drivers, as well as the introduction of stricter medical standards. Experience does count for a lot in this industry, but less old guys could mean safer highways and higher wages for the rest of us. Sorry, boomers. Safety technology is one area where the industry and safety advocates might find more common ground. The truck that killed Ed's wife was not equipped with any kind of safety features. The truck I'm driving now is bristling with them. Two separate systems monitor the distance and speed of the vehicle ahead of me and make loud warning noises when we're getting too close or when the vehicle ahead slows down. The truck is also equipped with front-facing and driver-facing cameras, as well as blind spot and lane departure sensors. A lot of truck drivers complain about all the obnoxious warning sounds that these things make, sometimes for no reason, but the fact is that if these systems can prevent even one death, they are more than worth the annoyance. Unfortunately, these types of systems are not required by law, and by some estimates, less than half of trucks are equipped with them. While drowsy driving is a tricky problem to legislate away, mandatory safety tech could save companies money and save lives at the same time. At the end of the day, it's up to every one of us to keep our roads and highways safe. Well over 30,000 Americans are killed in traffic accidents every year, and of those, over 4,000 involve big trucks. Many more people suffer life-changing injuries just like Ed's son. The scale of the tragedy is difficult to comprehend, and it's going on all around us every single day. The ultimate solution, I think, is structural. Nearly everything we buy, from food to clothes to toilet paper, is the result of thousands of miles of driving by error-prone human beings. Self-driving vehicles and radical changes to the way we buy and consume products 
will have the biggest impact on the abysmal safety record of the American highway system. Until then, get enough sleep, don't drive drowsy, stay off your cell phone, and just be careful. Your life and the lives of others depend on it. Hey guys, one more note. We're giving away a copy of this book, and although it's a sad story, it's definitely a page turner, and I think it's an essential read if you spend a lot of time behind the wheel. Find out how to enter the giveaway at the link below, and if you're curious, check out my previous content about truck driving while you're there. Thanks for watching, hug your loved ones, and drive safe.